Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in again. Uh, really excited to have you guys back uh, for a new series that I'll be doing uh, throughout you know, the next couple of weeks every Tuesday. Um, I recently was on Alex Ost's Instagram channel to talk about my struggles with body image and eating and how that affected me as a, as a female, as a person, and as an athlete. And um, I wanted to use YouTube and Instagram and my social platforms to, to help bring awareness to what I did um, and what I went through, but also hopefully help some of you out there who are going through the same thing. I am not a professional. I have no training in psychology or um, sports medicine or anything like that. This is just all personal and what I went through and how I can hopefully help some of you. Um, so take this with a grain of salt. What worked for me might not work for you, um, but it is important, I think, for me to share some of the things that I went through um, the people who helped me and how they helped me in hopes of one day hopefully being able to help some of you. Sorry, and Zena helps a lot too. So with that, we're gonna dive right in um, and talk about the first topic of this series, which is body image. So let's dive right on in. So for those of you who listened to Alex's uh, IGTV story last week, um, this will sound pretty similar, but um, just wanted to give a brief overview for those of you who didn't catch it um, and kind of say it in my own words again. Um, you know, my struggles with body image first started in middle school. Can you lay down, please? Lay down. Thank you. Um, first started in middle school. I started to grow and I started to lift and run and do strength and conditioning work and I realized that my thighs were kind of the first thing for me that started to grow. And I was bigger in that area than pretty much all of my friends. Um, they were strong, but for me as a middle schooler, I didn't see strong, I saw big. And I remember, you know, trying on jeans and skirts and things, and things just didn't fit right because I had an athletic build and not the normal build of you know, a 12 year old, um, my mom used to say I was born with thighs. And if you look at my dad, I have his build to a T. Um, and those weren't fitting in the Abercrombies and Hollisters and, and everything. And so that was a struggle for me. Um, on top of that, I had pretty bad skin. Um, I had some bad acne and um, wasn't super confident in my social situation in middle school either and hadn't really found my place. And so um, a lot of insecurities coming from different areas kind of took its toll on the one area that I thought I probably could and should have control over and that was my body. Um, so it took me, there wasn't really one surefire thing that helped me other than growing. Um, I think when I grew, I started to lengthen out a little bit and my eyes got a little less stocky. Um, and entering high school and going to a new school I think saved me as well. Um, I went to McDonough where all of my friends not only were amazing people but most of them were athletes and they were going through the same struggles I was going through so when you're going through them together they don't feel so much like struggles. And um, I wasn't lifting as much. I'm someone who puts on muscle pretty quickly so I think I also lose it very quickly so I think between growing and not lifting but playing more, I kind of leaned out a little bit or what I thought was leaning out in my eyes. And I think the biggest thing for me was confidence. And I was confident in my social situation. You know, it was cool to be an athlete. It was cool to make varsity. And I started to put things together like, oh, my legs make me strong and fast, which helps me make varsity basketball or varsity lacrosse. And that sort of helped kind of reframe my mindset where what I saw was a negative wasn't so much a negative anymore and I saw it more as a positive and when my family would say like flex your muscles and flex your quads like let's see how strong you are I was proud and so I think a combination of those sorts of things really helped me in high school um, and made me not worry about my body I was always pretty confident 
Um, but come college, you know, I had some ups and downs with body image. Um, my freshman year, I put on probably 15 to 20 pounds, mix of muscle and probably some fat. Um, and it was, it was a tough adjustment for me. I was playing really well. Um, I went to Maryland and was playing as a freshman. Um, you know, started, was fulfilling that dream, but every time I came home and looked in the mirror, I wasn't feeling great about myself and I wasn't feeling like I looked good. And, um, you know, I think part of that was an adjustment to college and, you know, with the freedoms that come with it, being able to choose what you want for dinner, making responsible choices. And I didn't always make the responsible choices, especially when it come to my eat, came to my eating and my working out. I stopped working out other than practice. Um, part of that was from being really stressed and part of that was from not wanting to seem like I was doing too much. And so I think, you know, that social component again in college, you're trying to figure everything out. And I had amazing teammates who did everything you, they could to make me feel comfortable. But oftentimes it's an internal battle that you're fighting and, um, you know, that self doubt and wondering if you're, if they really like you and if you're doing what's cool and what's not. So I think that started to kind of make me feel insecure and I didn't want to be left out. So anytime we went to stamp, which was like a local like building in college where we had different food options or, you know, Chipotle or noodles and company, I would go and I would eat sometimes double dinners because I wanted to hang out with my friends and, um, you know, try to figure out and navigate those waters. And so I think college, the combination of lifting and, not eating right and stopping working out the way I had been used to in high school and college and before college. I think that added some weight and made me really uncomfortable in my skin. Um, and it wasn't really until I couldn't fit into my ski pants that freshman winter when we were skiing that I had a meltdown and realized that I needed to start focusing on what I was doing that was benefiting my lacrosse and my self-esteem and what I was doing that was not. And the things that were not benefiting me were my food choices, both for lacrosse or self-esteem. And so I decided, you know, I needed to eat better. I needed to make smarter decisions with my nutrition and I needed to start working out more to not only, you know, combat the food I was eating, which is a bad mindset to have, but um, more so to be in shape and play and be able to play at my peak ability for, for college, which as a midfielder in college, I needed to be able to run quite a bit. So, um, after my freshman fall, you know, things were great for me. I felt like I was really comfortable with the team. I was in a good spot socially. I was in a good spot lacrosse wise and exercise wise and school wise and everything sort of gelled. Um, and I had like a really kind of great year and a half. So from like the beginning of 2014 or 2013 uh, through like summer, the beginning of summer of 2014. Um, and that's where I think, you know, I went from like a low, like a high, like eat too much back to like steady. And then my body image sort of plummeted again where I went to the other extreme of over exercising and under eating. And, you know, I think a lot about why that happened and what kind of that mindset was. And I'm not sure it was a conscious decision at all, but um, after my sophomore year, I'd won the Torton, we'd won the national championship. There was a lot of pressure now to kind of keep that going for two years. And um, you know, my coaches did a great job of not push, putting pressure on me or the team, but you see it in magazines and you hear everybody talk about it and I'd be lying if I said it doesn't get in your head a little bit. Um, you know, individual things weren't my motive at all. Um, you know, everything team related was, but it's, it started to stack up on each other and, and the pressure became a lot. And, um, you know, I started to see myself in magazines a lot and taking pictures with little kids and getting posted on Instagram. And I'm, I started to become very aware of the fact that people were, I was very visible and that in some way that shifted my mindset to like, I need to look good. And, um, at that point, good was skinny. 
and so I kind of went through a phase where I pretty much for like six or seven months I would eat the bare minimum of what I needed to kind of sustain me and keep me from passing out and I would sometimes do two or three days of working out and in my head I was like I'm doing this to get fit to make sure we go back and repeat and make sure we go back and um, are successful on the field and that's what I kept telling myself but I think whether I was conscious of it or not the motives of like looking good and being presentable for camera and and making sure I, I felt skinny enough like I think that was an underlying motive as well whether I really thought about it or not I think I kind of fooled myself into thinking it was all for lacrosse and it wasn't really at all um you know, on top of that, I was entering, um, you know, a new year and um, just trying to kind of find my place again in terms of like how I stack up socially and with the team and with boys and, um, you know, new relationships popping up. And um, while I felt really great with my team, you know, that the pressure of like looking good for boys started to kind of slip into that as well. Um, so I pretty much was in that for, you know, that mindset of like over exercising, under eating for a good six or seven months. And I played fall ball, I did fine. I passed our run test, um, but that was definitely the year I was probably the most tired. I wasn't really sleeping a lot. I was, then starting to get angry a lot. Um, one, I contribute to being hangry where I was hungry, so I was angry. Um, but two, you know, at that point, you know, teammates and my parents and my coaches had started asking questions like, is everything okay? You look really skinny, um, which I got defensive about and I started to get really mad because I was eating but I know I wasn't eating enough and um, that made me really angry and I was an angry person and I wasn't a great friend and I wasn't a great teammate for a few months that fall and it wasn't kind of until I went into the office with Kathy for end of fall ball where I kind of had a sit down conversation with her and we didn't talk about my body image or you know, how I felt about myself. It was all, she tried <laughs> and she tried to be like, you know, what's going on, what's wrong? And I blew it off, but I knew it was her trying. And she, basically the feeling I got out of that meeting was like, I didn't perform as well as I could. And I think for me, not being there for my teammates and putting my best, my best self forward and risking losing something that I loved and was so passionate about that kind of woke me up and it pulled me out of my hole and made me realize that you know I need in order for me to play and have the impact I wanted on field to accomplish the goals of our team and myself like I needed to be healthy and I needed to to have strength and fuel to eat and that nobody cared what I looked like and I wouldn't care what I looked like if we couldn't accomplish our goals and so I think for me not saying this is right or wrong it took almost losing something that I loved more than myself and people I loved more than myself at that time you know my teammates my coaches my family my friends it took almost losing that for me to kind of wake up and get myself together um, so once I had that conversation, that was around Thanksgiving, I really started to make an effort um, to one, make sure I was eating, but two, talk more positively about myself and um, start associating, you know, things that I used to see as faults as positives and my thighs and um, my butt and my arms and whatever, you know, my long arms and my broken noses and everything and It took a lot of work and it took, you know, I had more bad days than good at the beginning But I think for me it really helped To have people there kind of guiding me along the way and were my little net if I fell back and had a bad day 
Um, but I think, you know, the big thing I learned was like day by day. Um, you know, if you have a great day, enjoy your great day. If you're having a bad day, taking stock of why it's a bad day for you as far as body image goes, like what you're feeling down about. And what I started to do was try to turn those into positives and the negative thoughts I'd feel, I'd try to flip the switch. And it took a lot of practice, but um, it worked. And I came back kind of that preseason into my junior year and I felt great again. And I felt like I was happier. I felt like I was, I was heavy, heavier, but I was happier and for me I started to realize that my happiness was better and the way I felt was more important than the way I looked and I think that saved my season my junior year um, it saved my emotional and physical health and ultimately kind of saved me from myself so since then um, I've had more good days than bad and um, I've tried, I think, talking to, well, camera, but you guys and through Instagram and through, you know, DMs has helped me realize, one, I'm not alone, but two, I can help you, I can help other people by talking about what I went through. Um, you know, I'm not the only one who went through it. I've had teammates and friends who have similar body image issues and, um, you know, I think we're in a spot where we're better as a community if we can talk about things and and help one another out so that's kind of my story since then i've since my junior year um you know i felt like i've been in a good place and like i said have had more good days than bad but um it's really been something that i'm not sure ever goes away but it has become a much quieter the negative thoughts have become much quieter since then so I was kind of thinking about like when I was talking getting ready to talk about this stuff like in terms of body image like things that I think hurt at me or caused it um, caused my shift and caused me to have a negative body image three things that you know helped me kind of get through it and then three things that I do now um, you know on my bad days so I think first and foremost the things that hurt me um talked about it a little bit you know the outside pressure outside attention um you know i think any that was a source of anxiety for me i think and you know wanting to please people other than myself which i think was brought on a lot by you know the media and um various other pressures that i kind of went through um you know, the media I definitely think was a big one. You know, you see yourself in a magazine and you are like, ooh, my thighs look big there. Or, oh God, that's a bad day, bad hair day. And it's a lot easier to say negative things than positive things about yourself, which is what I found myself doing quite a bit. Um, and then I think one of the things that actually hurt me was like receiving validation. So, you know, as I was not eating a ton and I was having poor body image and I was losing weight, I had people who were like, oh, wow, you like, you look great. Like, you look really skinny. Like, you look awesome. And I think some of those people genuinely thought I looked good. And then I know I had friends who were like, you know, you look really skinny. And they were trying to imply that I looked too skinny. But I didn't take it that way. Any even negative reinforcement was positive to me. And I knew that people were seeing results. So the validation for me was kind of like a kiss of death in terms of I got addicted to it and I wanted people to keep saying I was skinny. And I never really got their connotation that, oh, I'm too skinny. Um, I think things that helped me get through, um, as I said, almost losing lacrosse, something that I loved at that moment more than myself for sure. Um, and almost as much as I loved my teammates and almost losing them, I think that, and disappointing them that that helped me kind of snap and snap out of it. Um, I think having, you know, the friends who did either say like, no, you look skinny, like try to try to help me or even the friends who were just there who were like, noticed something was going on, but didn't necessarily want me, want to force me to say what was going on. Um, knowing that they were there and I could come to them when I was ready to talk about it helped me tremendously. I'm so fortunate. 
Um, and then I think the big thing is like forgiving myself, you know, I'm not perfect and um, I need to forgive myself for, you know, allowing, you know, certain things to, to hurt me and hurt my confidence in myself. And, um, you know, I look back and I wish I hadn't been in pain and I wish I hadn't, you know, gone through that struggle sometimes. But at the same time, I think it's made me more like stronger and more aware and hopefully be able to help other people. So I think forgiving myself for not being perfect at any point has really been helpful. And then the last, you know, things I do on my bad days, I realize I'm not perfect and that's okay. I've accepted that and um, accepting that I can't control everything and I can't control how people feel about me, but I need to love myself anyway. That's helped. Um, I've turned negatives into positives. So if I, feel, if I have a day where I'm like, oh, my thighs look big, I'm like, nope, my thighs are strong and they helped me get through that J workout. And turning, you know, negatives into positives either for yourself or for a friend that's struggling um, is definitely really helpful. And then the last thing that I think is most important is that I realize today that how I feel trumps how I look. And so you'll find me most days like today not wearing any makeup and not, you know, straightening my hair, not, you know, doing anything for looks, but just doing things that make me feel good and make me feel happy. And if I'm happy and I'm feeling good, that's all that matters. So those are kind of my three things in either category. Um, I appreciate you guys listening in. Um, you guys have been amazing supporters throughout my body image journey and the highs and the lows and I hope this video has helped you guys. Uh, next week we're going to talk um, a little more in depth about eating and what I did to kind of pull myself out and have a healthy relationship with food. Uh, but until then, stay safe, uh, be well, and hope to see you guys back soon.